With hardware and prices of laptops seemingly going up, we need to bring back the discussion of Chromebooks and their affordability, and the fact that they can do almost the same tasks that a laptop can accomplish at a fraction of a cost. So why is no one talking about them in 2023? Hi guys, my name is Manuel Tall, and today we're going to be looking at the super affordable Asus CX-1 Chromebook and look at why you should consider this Chromebook over a laptop with your next purchase. We'll go over the specs, the operating system, and the applications and use cases for a Chromebook, especially the ones that you may not know you could do on these little machines. First, we're going to start off with the design and overview of the Asus CX-1. And guys, if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing to the channel for weekly videos on new tech and tech reviews. So the Asus CX-1 comes with a 15.6 inch screen, and it gives all the impressions of a regular sized laptop. The biggest giveaway for most Chromebooks is usually the Chrome logo that can be found on the outside shell. Now this Chromebook comes with a full size keyboard and a number pad, a feature that not many 15 inch laptops have. This is excellent for those who wanna be doing productivity, especially those who use spreadsheets often. Another fantastic feature of the CX-1 is the ability to open the laptop at 180 degrees. This is extremely good for those who want the perfect viewing angle and the portability and flexibility to work in pretty much any environment. And with the ports, the Chromebook doesn't hold back. It comes with two USB-C ports, two USB 3.2 ports, and a micro SD card. And an added feature is it still has a dedicated headphone jack. Now the screen on the CX-1 is a full 15.6 inch HD 1920 by 1080p display. It comes with an anti-glare coating and does a pretty decent job of being able to replicate colors even in bright conditions. The display brightness is pretty bright and it's bright enough to work in pretty much any indoor condition, but you will have some issues in outdoor settings, especially in direct sunlight. Now the biggest letdown for the screen is that it's an LCD panel with some of its colors being washed, but at $299 you would expect some sort of cutbacks from Asus. It's still a great viewing machine, but obviously not comparable to a MacBook or a workstation grade laptop in the thousands of dollars. Now guys, I've actually done an unboxing and I went through a lot of the features in depth. So if you want to check out the video, you can click on it right here for more in-depth view of the CX-1. Now I want to take some time to talk about the specs of the CX-1 Chromebook. But before we get there, I just want to go over how far these Chromebooks have come. This is my Asus Chromebook that I had purchased back in 2016. And it had gotten me through three years of college without any issues. And this thing didn't even have a quality CPU, if you want to say that. This actually had a mobile chipset, uh, the same ones you could pretty much find on the Galaxy S phones at the time, and it had only two gigabytes of RAM. But because Chrome OS is so efficient, I'm gonna talk about more about the Chrome OS soon, this was able to handle a lot of the tasks, a lot of the primary tasks that a lot of people will be using these Chromebooks for without any issues. Now the CX-1 comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and it has an actual Intel Pentium quad-core processor something significantly better than this old machine that I had back in the day. So the quad-core processor is extremely efficient. It doesn't use a lot of battery and it can pretty much do anything that you can throw at it in a Chromebook. Now you might be wondering, eight gigabytes of RAM and a quad-core processor, that seems like any run-of-the-mill laptop. But remember, we're talking about Chromebooks and Chromebooks are different from Windows laptops and Macs because of the OS that they use. So comparing the specs from one to one is not a fair comparison. And this leads me into the new segment of what a Chromebook is and why it's different from a regular laptop. And the main reason for that is the operating system of Chrome OS. So the primary operating system of Chromebooks is Chrome OS as the name implies. Now, technically speaking, Chrome OS is actually a Linux based operating system, but it's tailored around Google's suite of applications. So as the name applies, Chrome, you're essentially gonna be running a lot of the applications through a web-based browser, of course, Google Chrome. So stuff like Google Sheets, Google Docs, and pretty much anything that you can run on a web browser, that's the sole focus and the primary capabilities of the Chromebook. Now you'd be wondering to yourself, why am I paying this much for a machine that can essentially only run the Chrome browser? Now at one point this was true, but in 2017, all Chromebooks pretty much were updated to be able to download applications from the Google Play Store. So any application that you can download for your mobile device an Android, you can have it installed on a Chromebook and this really expanded what you could do with a Chromebook. Now, of course, there is a drawback to the Chrome OS. So unless you can find an application on the Google Play Store, you will not be able to install it on the Chrome OS because it's a very specific Linux OS. So for example, if you're in media studies or you're a college student and you need to download a media editing application like Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut or anything like that, you simply won't be able to install it on a Chromebook. Or on the flip side, if you're doing anything engineering related like 
a specific program or like computer aided design CAD, you cannot run these applications on the Chrome OS unless you can find them on the Google Play Store, as I mentioned earlier. Now, what the Chrome OS does offer is allow you open and use applications at blazing fast efficiency that allows you to conserve your power. So the application performance on the Chromebooks is actually quite phenomenal with the applications you can find because a lot of them are pretty much tailor-made to run on the Chrome OS. Now, as I mentioned, a lot of the applications are run through the Google Chrome browser and a lot of the apps that I use are from the Google Suite. So whether it be Gmail, Google Sheets, or Google Docs, when I was in college and using Chromebook, that was pretty much 90% of my use. And because everything is being done through the Chrome browser, you're not really using a lot of performance and battery life. And I want to talk about battery life because battery life on this Chromebook is between eight to 11 hours. Now, even when using it for productivity, but watching YouTube videos or playing music in the background using external speakers, I got anywhere from seven to eight hours on a single charge. And speaking of charge, everything is charged through a USB-C port. So that means it's universal. You don't need a specific proprietary connector to charge these Chromebooks and they charge really, really fast. Now, if you were to compare the battery life to a machine, a Windows machine for the same price range, if you can even find one for $300, you're not gonna get that eight to 11 hour mark at all. As a matter of fact, what's gonna end up happening is you're probably gonna get abysmal speeds because you're gonna have a hardware on that laptop that's super cheap that could barely run the Windows OS to begin with, and then everything else, including the applications, will be buggy. So one of the sweet spots about this Chromebook is the price and something that you can't really buy anything else in that $300 range. So if you can find a laptop that can get similar performance, even on Google Chrome for $300, you'd be extremely lucky to find one. And this leads me to the last topic, who should consider buying a Chromebook and who are these really built for? So the two main people that this is gonna really target are students or people that just need a machine to browse the internet. Now for college students, I can say for the most part, a lot of the applications you'll be using is pretty much a browser to do your research and a document editor to write your papers. So unless you're in a very specific field like media creations or you're in computer science where you need a machine to program, this will pretty much cover 90% of all the tasks at a very, very cheap price. Now, some reasonable alternatives to a Chromebook are tablets. And one of the biggest tablets on the market right now that's catching a lot of people by surprise is the Lenovo P11 tablet. And this comes equipped with a keyboard and stylus attachment. Now, the great thing about these tablets is that it runs on pretty much the same operating system. It's an Android device and it can run the same apps as a Chromebook and it allows you to sync everything via cloud. Now, you can also consider an iPad, an entry-level iPad as an alternative as well, because everything is web-based and you can use a lot of Google Suites on an iPad as well. Unfortunately, like I said before, finding a laptop in that $300 price range is pretty much impossible. And if you can even find one, you're not gonna get the same performance. Now, I'm actually gonna be doing a full review on this Lenovo P11 tab and I'll be talking about some of the advantages of this tablet compared to other tablets, as well as comparing this to other laptops. So the review will be coming relatively soon. And that is it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more tech-related content that I release on a weekly basis. And I hope you got a little bit out of this video and understand what Chromebooks are and why they're still a viable option to everybody. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.